I watched Lockwood & Co on the recommendation of some very polite but enthusiastic people and I loved it, but now having read the books I am doubly impressed by how good an adaptation it is. This video is brought to you by my book, Just Stab Me Now, which has over a thousand ratings on Amazon, most of them chipper, which is pretty darn awesome. If you enjoy characters who are not very good at taking their own feelings into account, you may enjoy Just Stab Me Now and you will almost certainly enjoy Lockwood & Co as well. I'm just saying. Back at the end of October, I reviewed a couple of the sword fights in the Lockwood & Co series, and off the back of that I asked for the books for Christmas, and I read the first two, which roughly coincide with the first series, in about three days flat. And then I started reading the third one and just fell off for some reason. My life has been madness. I published a book, I moved house, I have basically been a construction site project manager ever since. But a couple of days ago I was finally able to pick up the third one again and finish it, and I raced through four and five basically in two days. I had said in the original video that the Golden Blade isn't in the books, but that's not true. He isn't called that, but he's very clearly an adaptation of one of the characters from the book series. So that was neat. Lockwood & Co is based in a world where ghosts are very real and can very really kill you, and ever since the problem began 50 years ago they have been increasing in number and in strength. In this reality, children and teenagers make up the vast majority of people who have talent, i.e. people who can see ghosts and therefore fight them, and so there are a whole bunch of agencies who are in the business of sending children into haunted houses to fight ghosts with salt bombs and magnesium flares and rapiers. Why not? The titular Lockwood & Co is the organisation that Lucy Carlyle, our book's narrator, ends up joining, and it is run, most unusually, not by adults, but by Anthony Lockwood, who is 15 or 16. Ably assisted by George Cubbins slash Kareem, depending on whether you're in the books or the Netflix series. Which is a good moment to say that the show changes the ethnicities of various characters, and of course Mr Joplin is now Ms Joplin. But the thing I noticed more than that was how many of the characters the Netflix show just made much better looking. In the books, Inspector Barnes is kind of a middle-aged, paunchy dude who looks tired all the time. Not in the show. And Quill Kipps, who works for the Fitz Agency, is originally a skinny annoying ginger, and he's now a burly potential love interest. And George obviously looks quite different as well, but Lucy and Lockwood are both pretty much exactly as described in the books. Though it has to be said, Lucy, as the narrator, does not spend a lot of time describing herself. And the main trio's mannerisms and personalities are all absolutely spot on. And when I was reading the books I was really struck by how good an adaptation the series was and how well they cast those characters. Which makes it even more sickening that Netflix cancelled it after one season because of course they did. They made a number of changes to adapt it from a 7 to 12 plus book series to a show. They aged up the characters by a year or two, maybe? They take out all the references to the fact that George's backside hangs out of his trousers a lot and that it puts people off their food, which was a good move, honestly, because what is hysterically funny to an eight-year-old in a book is like a safeguarding issue waiting to happen in a TV series. I know that all of the characters are played by actors who are adults, but still it's kind of Skeevy. It would have been kind of skeevy. And to be honest, the lack of sexualization of the teenage characters is really nice. I would say it's refreshing, but I don't know if it's actually refreshing because I don't watch a lot of television, but it's really nice. There's clearly some pining going on, but mostly they're too concerned about saving each other's lives and solving the mysteries than romance. There is a deleted scene from the show which isn't in the books, and while it didn't make it into the show and I understand why, I am kind of a little bit sad about it because it's just amazing, and it manages somehow to have the main teenage female character in a towel and not have it be gross. Now if you don't mind, I would like to get some rest before your diet tomorrow. Sorry, um, nice pyjamas. Thanks. Nice towel. Uh, would you mind take just yeah, yeah. cause I'm- yeah, <laughs> I think it's just that perfect look of horrified realisation from Lockwood that those words did actually just come out of his mouth that really sells it for me. Of all of the deleted scenes, that's the one I'm, I'm saddest didn't make it in because I laughed a lot. Anyway, the first two books are adapted into the Netflix show, the series is five books long, and it comes to what I thought was a very good and satisfying conclusion. And when it comes to series, and indeed books, I'm always of the opinion that it's better to quit while you're ahead. This has basically been a stealth episode of Stuff You Like, hasn't it? Amazing. Okay, highly recommend the books if you like the series, I highly recommend the series in general, and if you would like to watch 
my review of the fights, there is probably something next to my face right now which you can click to get there. Welcome to my new house, which is actually quite old. Look out for a video on the 1940 version of The Mark of Zorro very soon. Thank you to everyone who has bought my book so far, and I'll see you soon.